as a clinician, the two very first things that I look to do are sync one's circadian signals back up with the natural light dark cycles in their environment. And number two, build redox. Redox is just a fancy way of saying, does a cell or does the body have adequate energy to run all of its natural daily programs and also heal and repair the damage? If you're dealing with clients, which I think you probably are, who have been going through these long healing journeys and have accumulated damage over the years, whether it's due to autoimmunity or whether it's due to things like Lyme disease or um, immune system overactivation with things like MCAS, you're going to deal with someone who has a really, really large deficit in the energy that they need in order to ultimately heal, let alone just run everyday repair or everyday programs, everyday metabolism. And so I'm looking through the lens of what has nature provided us in order to support this redox for people's bodies. And of course, I talk a lot about sunlight on the skin. I think light on the skin is, is twofold. The red and infrared light, well, specifically the infrared wavelengths of light, remember we pull those deeply into our body and that builds exclusion zone water. So hence why that is a form of building this redox, that exclusion zone water is healthy negative charge, vital energy for the cell. Number two, when sunlight strikes the skin, you, we create molecular hydrogen. So naturally, when, when um, our, so let me, let me back up, backtrack for a second. So our skin contains melanin and the melanin in our skin and all molecules in our body are surrounded what's, by what's called a hydration shell of water. And this hydration shell of water is a version of structured water. It's a version of exclusion zone structured water. And what, and what melanin has in our skin is melanin is a very, uh, it's a light absorptive pigment, right? It absorbs all wavelengths of light. And when it absorbs light, it actually provides energy for the melanin molecule to split water into molecular hydrogen and molecular oxygen. This research is really um, ha has been done deeply over the course of about 30 years with uh, the main researcher here being Arturo Solis Herrera. If you want to look up his, his main book is called Melanin Master Molecule. But what I want you to take away from this is that we have a natural way to produce molecular hydrogen hydrogen inside of us through sunlight on the skin. And remember, molecular hydrogen, which I'm going to go into in a second, is I just want you to know it's a highly bioavailable molecule. It's a gas. And what it can do is it can move anywhere in the body where it's needed to improve our body's ability to have redox or adequate vitality, adequate energy and charge. The other place that we make molecular hydrogen is in our gut microbiome. But these days, our gut microbiome is is kind is devastated typically with things like glyphosate. We've got dysbiosis. We've got SIBO that can change how the body and the gut microbiome itself is producing and utilizing molecular hydrogen. And so I find that um, we're deficient these days in molecular hydrogen due to our in, indoor lifestyles along with our gut dysbiosis. And so this is why I started to dive down the rabbit hole of molecular hydrogen. I also understood that, I, you know, you know me, my, my love and my passion is water. And so I started researching the various healing waters around the world and found that these healing waters at places like Lourdes or waters uh, that are consumed, natural mountain spring waters that are consumed in places where there's uh, lots of centenarians are very rich in molecular hydrogen. And so I thought to myself, oh my goodness, we could be getting this from our spring water and our drinking water as well. And so that led me into the study of molecular hydrogen. Um, I went on to take a lovely course through the Molecular Hydrogen Institute with Tyler LeBaron. I highly encourage you listen to Tyler in various um, podcasts and things as you'll learn a lot about molecular hydrogen. Clinically speaking, what does molecular hydrogen do that I love? Well, when people are not able to get adequate light on their skin, uh, when people are in environments that are very depleting of their energy, their exclusion zone water, their redox, and these environments would be environments that are high in non-native EMFs, really elevated in this toxic blue artificial light, and where people come into very little contact with nature. So little contact with Earth's electrons in charge, with natural sunlight, um, environments where people might be working with things that are ultimately pollutants. And so the things that are essentially stealing our body of energy and this charge. And so these are individuals who would highly likely benefit from molecular hydrogen, as would people, as I mentioned before, people who are on these healing journeys that require adequate energy to ultimately resolve their tissue damage. Because 
bottom line, what happens in the body is we have a lack of adequate energy that could be caused by multiple things inside of a cell. That lack of adequate energy ultimately results in cellular damage. And the, the body attempts to clear that cellular damage, but oftentimes it doesn't have adequate resources to do so. And so by providing molecular hydrogen, we're giving an energetic resource that the body can use to heal itself. Now, molecular hydrogen is considered a selective antioxidant, and here's why. It's actually, molecular hydrogen consists of two hydrogen, or two hydrogen atoms connected into basically a gas. And remember, hydrogen on the periodic table has it's the most, it's the simplest element on the periodic table. It has one proton and one electron. So essentially you combine two of them together and you've got a very simple, small molecule that can go anywhere it can, it, anywhere needed in the body. So again, because it's so small, it can diffuse through membranes. It can be applied topically on the skin and actually go deep into the tissues where it's needed. It's, um, it can be consumed via the stomach and then absorbed out to things like, let's say the joints to support the body with that, that beautiful hydrogen gas at, at its selective antioxidant capacity. So why is it being a select selective antioxidant so beneficial? Well, number one, antioxidants are things that can donate an electron in order to calm inflammatory cascades. Infl inflammation is, is essentially molecules like reactive oxygen species that are have unpaired electrons. And electrons don't like to live unpaired, right? They like to live with a buddy. And so these molecules in the body are essentially looking for an electron in order just to be calm. And if they can't be calm, they're going to continue this inflammatory cascade of stealing an electron, stealing an electron until there could be massive tissue damage that occurs. And so molecular hydrogen acts as a selective antioxidant because it has electrons to donate to calm the oxidative stress or the damage or inflammation that is currently occurring. Not only that, it not only calms these inflammatory cascades, how it also has the ability to increase something called mitochondrial membrane potential. That's that energetic buildup of charge between the inner and outer membrane of the mitochondria, where ultimately that buildup of charge results in improved ATP and water production. And so we want our mitochondria to make this ATP and water because in the intracellular environment, this water with the help of ATP becomes structured into this beautiful exclusion zone water, which again becomes a reservoir of more energy that the cell can draw upon. So it's calming the damage, it's improving mitochondrial water production that ultimately increases the energetic vitality of a cell. And it also acts as what I call a redox adaptogen. Redox, it, meaning, meaning uh, having, uh, let me say, having unlimited antioxidants, like high, high dose antioxidants is, has not actually proven to be ben beneficial in clinical research. Um, one of the most interesting studies was studies where they took smokers who have a lot of oxidative stress going on in their bodies doing, due to the fact that they're inhaling toxins all the time. And so these, these high oxidative stress loads, the researchers hypothesized, they said, well, let's give these smokers high doses of antioxidants, like antioxidants like beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E. And so they high dosed these smokers, or they gave these smokers high doses of antioxidants in one group. And then in a control group of smokers, they gave no antioxidants. And they just went on to, to the observation period of the study. And what they found was shocking. The smokers who were receiving these high dose antioxidants were actually not, or were actually not getting healthier. They were actually having greater risk of death from all cause mortality. And so they went on to say, wait a second, we thought inflammation, all inflammation was bad and we needed to suppress all inflammation. And it turns out that a little bit of inflammation in the body being emitted, which is typically emitted by mitochondria, is a signal. And so you need the signal to still be emitted to say, hey, yeah, we still have some damage here. And I'm doing this because the signaling is actually biophotons. It's light. So essentially, you want to view the mitochondria as making light. And depending on the amount of light that they're making as these reactive oxygen species, it will determine how it'll be a signal to the nucleus, to the membrane, to the area surrounding the cell where the immune system lives. It'll be a signal about how much attention needs to be drawn into the cell. Uh, and if you have a cell that's releasing a lot of light, reactive, making a lot of reactive oxygen species, this is a cell that's gonna signal a lot of immune attention, which is what we see in things like autoimmune conditions. Um, and so you've got this a, lot, a really aggressive light show going on. And if there's, like I said, not adequate resources to calm the inflammation appropriately,
then that can create ultimately cellular damage, aggressive cellular damage, and cellular death, ultimately tissue destruction as well. And so we want to be able to calm the inflammation just to the point where it is no longer a threat to create cellular damage, but will not suppress the photonic light signaling that's going on so that the immune system still knows, oh yeah, we do need to attend to a couple of things here. And the nuclear DNA says, yes, we still need to make these types of proteins in order to optimize cellular health and vitality. And so the reason molecular hydrogen works so beautifully in this situation is because it acts selectively, or like I said, a redox adaptogen. It only calms the inflammation just to that important threshold without suppressing the light signaling that needs to take place. And not only that, there are instances where there's too little light signaling taking place. We have immunosuppressive um, th th diseases and things that go on. So immunosuppressive things like HIV, immunosuppressive things like cancer. And the, um, the solution isn't always we need to stimulate and stimulate the immune system. It's let's let that light show communicate again. Let's reestablish that photo tonic light communication. And so molecular hydrogen in these instances actually increases inflammatory cascades accordingly in order to be able to improve that light and biophotonic communication throughout the body. So to me, it is so brilliant that there is a molecule that we would naturally be making if we were getting sunlight on our skin all the time. And we would be having this capacity to calm inflammation where it's needed and increase as well as increase inflammation where it's needed to optimize healing and ultimately thriving health. And so beautifully, we now have thousands of research articles on molecular hydrogen that show that it is beneficial to countless conditions. I believe the last time I checked, I saw that it is either um, supportive, it will either support, halt the progression of, or completely reverse 180 different disease conditions. What have I seen it with clinically? Clinically, I've seen it very beneficial for various forms of brain fog, any form of neurodegeneration or brain-based inflammation. We have a massive amount of mitochondria in our brain. And then, and when they're creating damage and we do not have the energy to clear it, we're going to start to get neurodegeneration or we're especially going to get things like brain fog, mood disorders. And so it can be really great if you're dealing with any form of cognitive impairment, as simple as, you know, brain fog, or maybe you're not remembering things as well, to things like Alzheimer's disease or um, even autoimmune conditions of the brain can be very much calmed by molecular hydrogen. I've also seen it beneficial in pain conditions. Pain is a signal to the body that there's energy needed to heal. And so if we can essentially consume molecular hydrogen regularly, we give the body the energy it needs to heal that, that pain. And so it would be, it's, I've seen it beneficial in all forms of joint issues, uh, rheumat or, uh, I'm sorry, arthritis, um, just simply joint degeneration, low back pain or disc degeneration. I've also seen it beneficial in um, autoimmune conditions. Because again, remember in autoimmune conditions, a tissue is kind of degrading itself and the immune system is there and the bodies are trying to clear the damage and heal, but it if it doesn't have the adequate capacity to do so, that's ultimately going to be, uh, be a problem. And so we want to give it the adequate capacity. And I hope you've heard me say, we can get a lot of this through sunlight and earthing, but I work with a ton of people who live in places like Canada or the UK, where there's a big chunk throughout the year where sunlight is less intense and where the ability to earth and ground for hours a day is just lessened because of the temperature and the climate. And so this as a clinician is a great tool to have in your toolbox in order to um, help support the redox in people, in your clients. How do you take it now? Well, there's multiple ways that it could be taken. And I've worked with clients who simply take it via um, tablets. So there's a whole host of molecular hydrogen tablets where you drop the tablet in water. It starts to bubble up like, uh, like Alka-Seltzer bubbles. And then uh, eventually that tablet will kind of dissolve almost completely and make its way and start floating on the top. Once it dissolves completely there, the about... 16 or so ounces of water, of hydrogen rich water, it's the gas, right? Those bubbles is the therapeutic hydrogen that we want to consume. So we would take those bubbles, that hydrogen rich water, and drink it fairly quickly within five minutes.
So that's one way to do it. And a therapy, in terms of a therapeutic dosage, I like people to start off with doing it. Try it once. See, I always say, let's see if it resonates with you. And then if it resonates with you, I'd like people to do it three to four times a day to really get a hold of that, um, in those inflammatory cascades and build that redox in the body. Now, hydrogen rich water is great. I've also worked with inhaled molecular hydrogen and I've seen amazing things. And so there are two different companies that I work with here. Axiom H2 is fabulous, as is um, Holy Hydrogen, uh, the Lourdes Holy Hydrogen. Uh, those two machines are uh, give you the ability to both dissolve hydrogen into water to a therapeutic amount. So the therapeutic amounts uh, of hydrogen in water is 1.6 parts per million. And so if you you'll see, you know, you can test it with various um, testing devices to see when I dissolve a tablet, is it bubbling up enough to have 1.6 ppm? The answer is yes. When I'm dissolving um, the hydrogen gas with these machines, does it form 1.6 ppm? Yes. The difference between a tablet and bubbling it in with these machines is that the hydrogen gas in, bubbled in from these machines stays stable. Whereas the gas that's produced from the tablet starts to dissipate out of the cup. It's gas, or it's gonna start to float out of the cup. And so that's why with the tablets, it has to be consumed very quickly. Whereas with this hydrogen rich water being produced by these machines, you can literally consume a glass with it over, over the course of an entire day and still have therapeutic effects. The other thing about these machines is that you can inhale it. And inhaled hydrogen is an amazingly bioavailable way in order to get hydrogen into the body. The difference being with these two machines is that the Lord's uh, Holy Hydrogen machine is one that is um, flowing hydrogen at approximately 120 milliliters per minute, which is a lower flow rate of hydrogen than the two versions of the Axiom H2. Um, so if someone has the Lourdes, I recommend they inhale for about 90 minutes a day if they're dealing with a you know chronic therapeutic condition. Whereas with these two, want, they have the Axiom 300, which is going to be 300 milliliters per minute, and the Axiom 600, which is 600 milliliters per minute. You know, So with that 600 milliliters per minute, really 30 minutes is all that's needed to get a very therapeutic dose of hydrogen for the day. Um, and it's just a nice way to, to you know, I, I have that 600 machine and I just sit down. It's great for me. I've got a, a real, like a real legit book, not a tablet, not a phone. And it's such a great time just to have maybe a warm cup of, of uh, tea or my, my latest gig with this is a warm cup of uh, water with lemon and salt. Love that in the winter months. And then um, just sit and inhale and read. And uh, the, the cool thing about this, that machine too, is that you can have two people inhaling. So you can either inhale 600 milliliters per minute, or you can um, have two people inhaling 300 milliliters per minute. And so my husband and I will do that as a nice routine whenever we can. Um, so we can inhale hydrogen together. <laughs> um, so anyways, the, the goal would be with this to get people a, a, this therapeutic dose of molecular hydrogen, either through the water or through the inhalation um, as frequently as you can in order to allow them to have the energetic capacity to optimize inflammation, optimize this biophotonic signaling, and ultimately give the body, give the cell, and give the mitochondria what they need in order to fully resolve what is causing ill health. And so it's been a very, very cool clinical tool to have, especially when people are in need of energy and are divorced from sources that we get from nature.